on the high plateau of Central Africa, in what is now modern Zimbabwe, stand the Matopo Hills. Large numbers of leopards inhabit these rock formations, which in their strange mystery and shape seem to take us back to the carvings of ancient African history. To the people of this region, this unearthly landscape has always been a sacred place, and still is to this day. Tucked away in these Matopo hills, there are messages from the very dawn of history. This is the Inswatugi Cave, one of the many rock shelters in the Matopos that were decorated by the people who lived here in ancient times. These truly marvellous rock paintings were inspired by motives that we don't know. Probably there was a variety of motives, as with all great art. Those distant peoples who faced the wild wilderness of primeval Africa must surely have felt the need for psychological and spiritual reassurance, as well as for magic to safeguard their cattle. And their artists, of long ago, clearly loved to portray the animals they knew. The land was ideally suited by its climate for man and beast to prosper. And even today, perhaps three or four thousand years later, it's easy to recognize dika, kudu, antelope and giraffe. The arid wilderness of the great Sahara, 3,000 miles to the north, could hardly be in greater contrast. Yet here, in the 1950s, even more surprising evidence was found of early African history. Today the place belongs to the creatures of the desert, lizards, scorpions and snakes that can survive the searing temperatures of this thirsty land, one of the driest and most desolate regions on earth. Water is the rarest and most precious commodity. Yet, even here, it must once have flowed in abundance. The revelation of these rock paintings in the Tassili Mountains of the Algerian Sahara, just 30 years ago, astonished the world. Whole communities of people, who were obviously African in origin, had created marvellous galleries of ancient art, depicting most vividly the life of the Green Sahara, as it must once have been. First we see hunting folk and the animals they lived among. The clearest proof that this region of the Sahara long ago teemed with wild game. The earliest paintings may be seven or eight thousand years old. But not all the people who inhabited this huge region were nomadic hunters. This horse, complete with saddle and bridle, points to the development of transport systems and traders. And this ox-drawn plough to the planting and growing of crops. Whether for war or sport, elaborate chariots came into use. While the clothing of these people bears a striking resemblance to the tunics of ancient Egypt. The evidence of these paintings suggests a continuous community of peoples living right across the Sahara from the Atlantic to the valley of the Nile. Yeah. 
Then, some four and a half thousand years ago, the climate began to undergo a disastrous change. We're getting mad. Gradually, the Sahara lost its rainfall, its animal life, and finally, its people. Abandoning their increasingly arid pastures, more and more people from the Sahara had to join their forerunners and follow the trails in search of a secure supply of water. Some headed for the tropical rainforests which lay to the south and west. Others moved east towards the valley of the River Nile. 